The views and opinions of this broadcast do not reflect the views and opinions of Armed Media, Who New Productions and its affiliates. Enjoy the show. Happy Tuesday, everybody. It is time for the F word again. I am so excited. I Actually, I'm not that excited that it's August, but I'm always excited to see another day. Um, it's not an, an F word of a day. It's Tuesday, not Friday. But uh, we have a really good day and obviously some great people on the show tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me. I My allergies are getting the best of me because... Oh my gosh, the trees are already starting to change in Minnesota, so my voice is doing some weird things. But Mr. Wingonomics himself, Mark Wingo, is on with us again tonight and will be continuing to do so as long as he wants to put up with me. Hi, Mark. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey, he's tired too. And we have a really special guest tonight, and I've had the pleasure of meeting him in person. And uh, he is just as smart, as strong, and as friendly as anybody I've ever met. And uh, his name is Andre. Here's an F word for you, everyone. Flu Ellen. Welcome, Andre. Hey, how are you? Thank you for having me. I, you know what? I'm really good. I, you know what? I'm tired, though. It's, I talk all day. I swear to God. And... By Tuesday night, <clears throat> if there's like anything different going on in the air, my voice starts going. And I'm not kidding. It was the last week of July, and all of a sudden I'm going, hey, wait a minute. Why is that tree changing colors already? It's, it, it's still summer. It is not, not fall at all. I mean, when officially is it fall anyway? Mark, is it there's like... no summer in Minnesota, Kathy. Oh, <laughs> fall, spring, and winter, you know that. Oh, fall, spring, and winter. Yep, that's right. But, it, I mean, it's been beautiful. I'm going to go to the cabin. This week it's nice. But driving and seeing all the different colors already has got me a little bit, I don't know, some sort of F word. There's an F word to describe it. I'm, I guarantee it. But um, speaking of F words, I was in court last Friday. You guys got to hear this. Okay, so Mark, I think I told you a little bit about this last week. But yeah. okay, so there was this stupid F word of a guy that I dated off and on. And more off than on. And uh, so I bought a new car last year. And he said, Kathy, don't trade in your other car. Sell it to me for what they'll give you for trade-in value. And I went, man, I don't really want to do that, you know, because there's the reason I'm trading it in is there's things that are starting to go wrong with it. Well, I know you take good care of it, and it'll be fine. So, long story short, he never paid me for it. He stole it from me. Oh. Yeah, even though he signed everything, the biggest F word I have ever known, ever, okay? This guy is like one big walking F word. <laughs> No, but here's the deal. I I actually had two contracts because first he did one in December, and I I was sick. You know I you know I've got Lyme disease, so I, I deal with all of the effects from that. And they had me on medications, and I was having all these different effects. And then I had another one signed because he still hadn't paid me. I did that in March right after I'd gotten out of the hospital and I was on painkillers. This guy's such a loser. That when he came over there to came over to my house to do that, he actually even stole some of my pain pills. So we're in court, and I've got copies of texts. I mean, and we're going. I mean, we're off and on for three years. Okay, so I've got. I saved everything, and um, he comes with a copy of a bill. For some car repairs that he had to have done that were over a thousand dollars. This is an infinity, folks. It's not cheap, right? And then he also had a copy of um, 
the when he transferred the title, which oh by the way was the same day he signed the contract saying that this car is being sold as is, that I'm supposed to be the lien holder, blah 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 blah. Here's his payments, he's gonna pay it back, had it all set up, he signed it. That's all he had. And he tells the judge, you ready? Gave it to him. So he he finessed you. <laughs> that's an F word for you. Finessed. Finessed. Well, that's a very friendly F word. <laughs> yeah. That's not what I think of when I think of him. <laughs> but you guys, I I kid you not. It was, and you know my personality, and sometimes my filter, another F word, isn't very functional, ooh, but it had to be in court, and when he said, she gave me the car, I wanted to stand up and say, hi, I'm Oprah, and you get a car, and you get a car, and you get a car. I was like, I felt like I was going to, my head was going to pop off. I was so angry. I went, what? And I couldn't react, you know? I'm going, oh my God, did he really just say that? And so, obviously, I'm like, you know, with all due respect, Your Honor, um, I'm a single mom. I'm a single mom, and I have three boys. Granted, now, they're all grown, but when I sold him this car, my youngest was still in high school. And if I was going to give the car to anybody, it would be one of my children or my brother or even my ex-husband, not somebody that... As he even said, and I said, that I'm on again, off again with. So I haven't gotten the ruling yet, because they said they're going to mail it. But I'm, I'm pretty darn sure that I won. But what a loser. You should have won the judge, Judy. No, here's the deal. Oh, my God. I was so embarrassed about the fact that this even happened to me. I was so embarrassed about it that I didn't even, I didn't even tell Griff, okay, until last week. Griff is like, what? What's his name? And I wouldn't know. I, because, I mean, I've got, I've got some pretty beefy friends, right? They would have gone and taken care of things. I mean, I even have a friend that's like a seven-time Golden Glove champion that would have been happy to go take care of him, right? But I don't want anybody that I care about getting in any way, shape, or form any kind of trouble, you know? So I was embarrassed, but... When you go and file small claims court, guess who did send me a letter? Judge Judy's office. And I didn't want to go on there. I didn't want to be on TV and be embarrassed. And I didn't want to get yelled at by her. You know, because she would have told me I was stupid. I know it. She would have yelled at me. I've seen those shows. Every time I saw it, I thought of him. And I went, nope, can't do it. But then yeah, I, but you got a free vacation. I right. got so and <laughs> More than anything, she was scared of getting yelled at by Judge Judy. <laughs> I know, I know, and I probably, and then I probably like would have tried. I probably would have started to laugh. I mean, because imagine, I mean, she would have yelled. I don't, I don't know. But here's what the better one was. So I mean, and I said, yeah, go ahead. I mean, when I when I talked to the producer, I mean, I I tried not to make the whole story sound as Jerry Springer-like as it did, but it kind of did. But that leads me into the next show that contacted me, Judge Jerry. Judge? Jerry Springer. Yes. He, you heard the ding, ding, ding. Oh, my, <laughs> no, but Jerry Springer's show was canceled because he wanted to start this new one called Judge Jerry because he's... Yeah actually a lawyer and so they wanted me for their pilot and their their producer her name is kayla she went so far she was like what's his facebook what's his phone number i'm going to go every way possible to get hold of him we'll fly you out to new york we'll pay you to be here we'll pay for your your hotel and you know my son and his girlfriend live in new york so it would have been like done and they told me it wasn't going to be televised so i'm like Again, and then she promised me that Judge Jerry wouldn't be mean to me like Judge Judy. 
and they would guarantee that they'd pay me for the car. I was in. And the jerk didn't even answer that. What a loser. But so that was my effing Friday. I couldn't even believe it that I had to spend time. But anyway, on to brighter things. Lessons learned. Don't. Or even I, I, I thought I did everything right, but he thought, thought he was above everything. Oh, and here's another F word that I found out. He's a felon. Oh, no. Right? So, I guess I, I need people. I need people, okay? I, so, have my people talk to your people, Andre, right? <laughs> so, if I meet somebody, I'm going to have to have somebody do background checks from now on. Yeah, for sure. They've soured me. <laughs> yeah, we got to screen the people who, who call Cappy, Andre. I know. I mean, I am single, and I I let people know that that I am I am currently you know dating and have no. But now it's like wow, my good people radar I guess was wonked out for a while. I don't know, but <laughs> um, Andre in in football. I, I want people to, to hear about your football career, but, I mean, you hear about, like, NFL players getting ripped off all the time, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, not, like, the stupid stuff like mine. Well, maybe. You never know. But what are some things that you've heard of that, you know, people have been taken? Oh, my God. I mean, I've heard of so many of them. I mean, even, I've even dealt with some of them my own, you know, in my own career. Uh, really? Yeah, probably the worst one uh, was, uh, golly, man, this guy got off with so much for a, a Miley Cyrus concert. What? Uh, yeah, he got a whole bunch of people to invest in a Miley Cyrus concert. He said that he was partnered with Live Nation or some craziness like that, and uh, it was a absol absolutely a lie. But he was a well—I mean, it was a well-played lie. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but yeah, it was absolutely uh, not true. We had a uh, background check done on him. He was, yeah, he was from some West African country, and, and he had some properties in islands. And after the the NFL, uh, uh, you know, there's like a uh, NFL FBI partners. So this guy went after him. That dude fled to like. He fled to somewhere in Africa. It was it was a crazy case. I was I was actually part of it too. I can't talk a whole lot about it, but uh, yeah. So he got he got away. You know, Hope, luckily it wasn't that much of mine. But shoot, man. other people, good God, he uh, yeah, he made a a f word, a fortune. Another f word. And it was not f word funny. I swear it was. Not but, right. Uh, oh my God. Yeah, so, you know, but the. The crazy part about it is, and you know, a lot of NFL guys are, are like are really loyal to the point where like we've always been so caught up on like we've always been on a team, so right. we really trust the guy next to us. So if somebody you know comes at us and say, "Hey, I'm trying to help you," or "I have an idea," or whatever, like we tend to trust people because we've been so built on trusting our family and trusting our teammates for so long. Uh, so it's really like uh, you know it gets kind of kind of tough for a guy to say like. I have to say no, and I have to, like, really kind of have my guard up for people because uh, not everybody's for my best interest, just like you've seen. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, that's just like, this, I mean, this guy even said to me, because I was, trust me, I hounded him for over a year. Pay me, yeah. pay me, pay me, pay me. He literally said, you make more money than I do. What's the big deal? Oh, God. I'm like, really? Yeah, so does a car dealership. You going to say that to them? But, right. No, I think that they think that, well, you've got so much money, you can afford to lose it. That's so maddening. Mark, have you ever had anybody rip you off? It happens all the time. So, you know, as far as with our tax and franchises, you know, I go through that all the time. And I've even heard, you know, your company's doing well, you don't need my money. What is what is this couple thousand dollars? And friends and family all the time. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty pretty common across the board when people think you are successful, more successful than they are. What's a good word for those people? Oh, oh, oh gosh. Phony. Phony. Foolery. 
Well, phony oh. is the P word, so it's like philanthropy, but oh, it, it sounds like an F word, so I go with it. <laughs> Edit that out, then. I, I don't want to show my... Well, I don't want to show my... <laughs> oh, geez, I said it's phony. <laughs> I know, right? But I liked it. <laughs> no, PA's cows in this. <laughs> That's what I said. I said I did that for philanthropy one week, so... So oh, good. <laughs> the F word. The F word for tonight is phony. And that's a phony, and it's a phony F word, but it works. And I would have been going for it. phony. Yeah, that's an F word for you, sir. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, speak, speaking of phony, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so you know, let's go back. So let's go back to uh, Mr. Flew Allen. What, Flew Allen? What, where does that name come from? What nationality is that? I've never heard that name before. It's not like, you know... Wales. It's some Welsh. It's Welsh. Okay. Yeah. My, well, my last name is actually my married name. Well, now my divorce name. But mine is Gumbiner, and it means rubber legs. Isn't that funny? It's Gumby, That's damn it. Cool. That's why it's Gumby. I figured it out. That's why they called Gumby Gumby. I got it. What is it? Interesting. Yes, Wingo. Where does that come from? A long story. I don't want to bore you guys with it. But I have no idea. Okay, so that works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Mr. <laughs> Flewellen, everybody wants to know about you. How old were you? And you know we talked about this in Iowa, but nobody was there to hear it. How old were you when you decided you wanted to play football? Uh, when I decided I wanted to play football, mm -hmm. I was like, I was like 21. But when I was forced to play football, like when I was uh, 15. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I never really, uh, it's crazy. I would have never decided to play football if it wasn't for my older brother who made me play. That's the only reason I played I play football. I hated football growing up. Never won any. I was a fat kid, F word. I was a fat kid, right? Really? I just wanted to just, I, I can't yeah, even I imagine that. Too. Yeah, I was just, I like to sit home, play video games. Eat honey buns, you know, you put the honey bun in the microwave for seven seconds and it's perfect. Right? Yeah. That's all good. <laughs> That's all, honey bun in the yeah, microwave. Yeah, with the wrapper still on it. With the wrapper still on it. Come on, you already know. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was, yeah, I was never, I was never like a football fan. I was never, uh, I didn't grow up playing. My parents didn't let me play uh, until I got in high school anyway. Um, so, yeah. Well, that's good. That's good because so many kids, so many parents live through their kids in the sport, you know. I've, I've seen that. Crazy. Okay, so 21, so obviously you were in college. Yeah, so that's when I really started, like, actually wanting to play the game, believe it or not. So even in high school, I only played because, you know, my brother played and my, uh, he was a senior, I was a first, and my friends were already out there. Uh, but yeah, even. You know, there's a time like, you know, if I was out there, I was going to work hard. That was kind of just my parents put in me. But in terms of enjoying the game and just loving the game, like, oh, I'm going to play in the NFL. I never had that. I didn't even have that until probably my junior year in college where I, where I thought I even had a chance to play in the NFL, which is as crazy as it sounds. It's just that was just how I was. How did you get into the NFL? So, um... How did I get into the NFL? So, right. Well, think about this, because there's all those kids. I mean, it's less than 1% of the nation, or less than 1% of every little peewee football kid that puts on a uniform makes it. But every single one of them, you think, wants it, right? Right. So, like, you know, I would say, let's see, of the, of the 1% that, that make it to the NFL, like to even stay in the NFL, it's like 1% of that 1%. Right. Uh, which is crazy, but just, you know, one thing I, I did have, which was, you know, my dad was a Marine, like he just instilled some, a lot of discipline in me. Mm -hmm. And a lot, I had like some really, really good coaches who saw way more in myself than I, than I, you know, I did in me. Um, so, you know, they really pushed me and I just, Whenever I was out there, though, I just wanted to be the best. Like, yeah, that was the thing. So that was what, you know, what drove me to success. Uh, you know, was just like, not the fact.
fact that I love playing, but it was just the fact that, like, if I was out there, I was like, I was, I was going to do it. You know what I mean? I wouldn't want to just, uh, you know, just be out there and just get my butt whooped. Like, that's just, that's, that's not fun. Like, yeah. if I'm already not having fun, like, it's like doubly not having fun if you're out there just get all this. So I was like, okay, well, if I'm already not having fun, then I'll just go ahead and just be the best. And then I can at least have fun not having fun. Right. Definitely. Yeah. So did you ever did you ever get hurt really bad? You know, I never really had a a really really bad injury. Thank God, I never like tore an ACL. The only thing I did, man, I, my worst injury, and this is a funny but stupid story, but I got to tell it anyway. Is uh, I took martial arts for like User for like channel. nine years. I was a Wing Chun. Uh, like, yeah, that was my, that was my discipline. So anyway, we used to break bricks and punch through bags, punch through walls, all this different kind of crazy stuff. And I used to love it. And I used to, you know, but did. So anyway, but during one particular practice, there was a guy, uh, he cheap shot at me. And so I was like, well, look, in my, immediately in my head, I was like, I don't break bricks and punch through bags and punch through walls like all the time. I was like, I think I could just punch this dude's helmet. Oh no! Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I just, you know, it made at that time it made logical sense. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, all right, well, let me just take a crack at it. So anyway, literally he crack. Keyword. Keyword. Yeah, he keeps shot at me. I tried to try to punch through his helmet. Uh, I lost that battle. So I like severely uh, broke my hand, and I didn't even know it until oh, no. the end of practice. Yeah, I had no idea until like the end of practice. I, I went to the trainers. I was like, hey, my hand, like. It's a little tingly, and I can't really use it. Uh-oh. Um, I was like, can you check it out? So he was like, yeah. Uh, he was like, sure. You know, we had an x-ray machine. So he goes to the x-ray machine, pulls up the x-ray film. He looks at me like, um, what kind of human are you? And I was like, what do you mean? Like, your hand is, like, severely shattered, and you need surgery, like, right now. Oh, my uh, gosh. Yeah, so I had surgery that like that evening. It was it was that bad. Like I had to, you know, I had all kind of metal in my hand at this point in time. I had to like really like re-engineer my hand. Uh, your hand like shattered. Like yeah, oh yeah, like shattered. Oh my yeah. gosh! No, was that yeah. while you were in the NFL or college? Yeah, or? It, was, it was while I was in the NFL. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Like, yeah. What so, did it yeah, do? Yeah. What did it do to the guy? I mean, did he like feel anything? No. Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> Like, no, nah. there's a reaction. So he was just like, so he was still mad because he thought, he originally thought I cheap shot at him, but I didn't. He, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what he was thinking. So, uh, anyway, so his reaction was like, dude, why'd you hit me? Like, <laughs> I'm like, bro, you just, you just like took a shot at me. What am I, what do you expect? Like, I don't know. It was just, anyway, you that was, was, that was it. it was like big wow. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so, yeah, that was my worst injury, though. It was a self inflicted injury. <laughs> well, that's good. I mean, do you think you, like, so you don't really think that you got concussions like they talk about, do you? Oh, well, if you count those, yeah. I mean, I've had a, I've had a few. Um, I've definitely had, like, I've had three documented, which are, like, they were really bad. But, like, I'm sure I've had, like, 30 in my career, at least. Wow. Yeah, so... Uh, but I do a lot of like uh, mental work right now that like really uh, I try to be really proactive about that because uh, you know I only got one mind and uh, so uh, so there's a lot of like mental work and work and exercises you can do to kind of mitigate some of the effects of that stuff. Uh, so I've, I've been doing that for the last you know years now, so I'm pretty good. That's good. And it seems like a lot of athletes are doing that, yeah. you know, working on their mental. You know, mitigate some of that. You know, the, the pain that they're and explosive, explosive hitting that they go through by mitigating the risk by doing like brain games. Uh, I know Tom Brady's really big on spending X amount of hours or you know minutes per day doing some type of brain game. So mm-hmm. that's huge. So, Kathy, I have a question. You know, for Andre too. Yeah. Um, you know, I, first of all, welcome to the welcome to the industry, the financial industry. You know. Um, mm-hmm. Investors don't know Andre is now in the financial industry, and I'm thankful that he chose to work with my company, New Beginner Financial, to work with Kathy as well with the whole thing. But 
Andre, I want to ask a question and get your opinion about this. I actually read an article on the Business Insider uh, regarding Saquon Barkley. And it said the headline is Giants second overall pick invested all of his thirty one million NFL contract and only spending his endorsement money. What are your thoughts about that? And you think that's a good idea? You think that's something that's gonna be a new trend or have you been going around professional athletes for some time or what are your thoughts about investing all your, your contract money? Oh, well, you know, that's a... Uh that's scary because it, I mean, it depends on like, you know, obviously it's a safe investment, but realistically, like no investments are really typically that safe. So that is, a, I mean, that's a risky bet. I understand it. And it, it sounds good. That is a risky bet to, to bet like, you know, your entire salary uh, and put it in the hands of someone or something else. Right. Uh, number one, uh, you know, number two, uh, Endorsements, man, like, you know, especially if those aren't liquid investments, like endorsements can run out with one injury, right? You know what I mean? So uh, I'm not saying it's not a smart move, but I'm saying if, uh, if his advisors or whoever it is, you know, doesn't happen to where like he can have access to it, like if it's not liquid, that could be a really, really dangerous play uh, because, you know, any, you know, anybody knows it's just it's one wrong step, one wrong move, one wrong hit, like your career is over with, you yeah. know, and so, you know, and, if your career is over with, the uh, endorsements are over with. Uh, and so, like, you know, it's just, that's a dangerous play. You know, I, you know, I, I give them props for trying to be uh, forward-thinking, but, uh, dude, man, if you, if you got it, keep it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Uh, that's kind of what I look at. Uh, yeah. That's the moment. I'm getting all choked up. Yeah. Sure. Wow. So, you know what I, I think, though? I mean, so... When you, okay, about like when you were a rookie and you got your signing bonus, because I, th- I think, I think, Andre, that people have a, a misconception that you guys, like, right off the bat, I mean, make, you know, Randy Moss money or, you know, Tom Brady money. I mean, how does that, I mean, give people the reality of what it's like. I mean, because not only do you get paid a certain amount, but there's that one thing that that Mark is an expert at, taxes. There's right. taxes that have to be paid. and they're, Aren't they like in every state that you play to? I mean, it's crazy yeah. stuff. So yeah. can you give people like just an understanding so they, they see and, and can get it clear a little bit better? Yeah, for sure. So, you know, so basically... Uh, you know, as an NFL player, you know, if you're not like a top and top 15 or first rounder, like you're really not even close to being set for life, right? So, number one, your signing bonus or anything you make is automatically in the highest tax, tax bracket. So, you're going to lose a chop that in half immediately, like mm-hmm. right off the bat. And then you have agent fees, which is typically 3%. Then you have financial planning fees. And then one thing that people don't really uh, think about is just, the cost of living in multiple places. Like most guys, when they get drafted, that's not where they actually live or reside. So, you know, you have a, a season address and you have an off season address, and more than likely you got to pay for both of those. Like, uh, you know what I mean? So that's another, you know, a big expense is, you know, you're paying for a place when you're not there somewhere half the year, and you're paying for another place when you're not there half the year. So that's also a big expense. Then you have training expenses, which get, it gets very expensive because, you know, you gotta, you gotta train like the best train. Um, you know, even, even the food wise, like, there's so many different types of expense. Like, the reason why a lot of the guys who are top tier, you know, like you see a Tom Brady, like, his regimen costs so much, but he has, a, he has it to be able to do it. So that's why he can play for, for, for right. But if it's a guy like, you know, Asian or, you know, you know, fourth, third, fourth round draft pick, like, he doesn't have that kind of capital to be able to take care of himself in a way, like, I mean, these guys are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on their bodies, right? And so, even to try to keep up with that, it's expensive, right? And so, you know, so it's just like you try to be the best at what you at what you do at your particular craft. Um, and it costs, so, you know, it's, it's easy for a guy to burn through and, you know, a lot of his, you know, what he's made in his first couple of years just because he's trying to <laughs> beat his best, right? right? So, you know, it's, you know, 
know, it's, it's a lot more than what people think, man. A lot, you know, and then you see these contracts where a guy, you know, you're like, oh, he got three years, you know, for $15 million, but that's the max value of the contract. Realistically, his guaranteed money is probably like three or four million tops. Right. right. So, you know what I mean? So if he doesn't hit all this incentives, he won't, he'll never see that 15 million. Never. Nobody ever sees the max value of the contract. So, it's, uh, you know, a lot of it is just uh, a lot of the smoke and mirrors. Um, it really is. Well, and I think, too, I mean, some of the things that I've heard from some of the guys is like, you know what, they're in the locker room with the guys that are making the Tom Brady money or whatever, or, you know, not close to it or whatever, and they feel like they need to keep up with them, too. Like, the guys that come in suits, and they feel like they need to dress the same way, and and they get themselves in trouble. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Sure. So, yeah. that Mark, that was a really that was a really good question because there are so many different investments. I mean, what what so do you again. see? What do you see is usually like the number one thing that guys spend their money on? Uh, all right, like that series of stupid stuff. Like stupid just, stuff. Just, 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 yeah. <laughs> stupid stuff. All right. So the stupid <clears throat> stuff. Uh, the F word. Foolish. There we go. Uh, Fooling his money. Yeah. Uh, foolish stuff. I would say uh, realistically, it's a uh, oh god. <laughs> a lot of it is just you're not on the scene, right? So like, you know, you have to uphold this certain standard for whatever reason. Uh, you know, if you're the guy, you got to dress like the guy. You got to party like the guy. You got to drive like the guy. So, uh, so that's like the biggest expense is like just entertainment, realistically. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just the biggest, the biggest pull is just expense is, is entertainment. It's just trying to you know, impose this, uh, this persona, uh, that you got to try to be when you really don't have to be that because you're already in the NFL anyway. So it's like, you know, you don't need to do anything more than that, but I think you have to, uh, you have to uphold that. So a lot of people get caught up in that. Um, I would say, you know, most everybody, you know, a young guy, that's all you see on TV. You see, you know, people being flashy jewelry, cars. Right. That's what you've, that's what you've grown up seeing, and that's success to you. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's what you aspire to. Because, shoot, man, you never knew any better. Nobody in your family ever had money or anything like that. So, you know, TV is what you try to get. You got access to be able to do what you've always seen. You're going to do it. Right. Um, so, it's not, I mean, I hate to say, I hate to use the word foolish. I mean, because it is, but I understand it. Like, I, you know, I, I never down the guys that they, they do stuff like that because shoot that's what they well, raised to believe is successful you work right. so hard for it too I mean that's yeah. what people don't realize I mean the level of dedication and work that goes into getting there I mean just I, I, people I mean you, you deserve it you deserve to have some fun F word yeah. you know yeah. like let off some steam and, and have a good time I mean and, and the guys are they're young they're young and never experienced it when they were kids. I mean, let me ask you, what was your most foolish one that you've done? Oh, God, yeah, you would put it on the spot with that one. You know that. Yeah, That's was, right. I was waiting on that question. <clears throat> oh, God. Yeah, right. Happy to win. Let me get back doesn't... to the All right, so this is like a... <laughs> you know, so now you're going back to... So right now I'm Andre Fluella, but now you're going back to flu, right? So flu, okay. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry. Tell me so what this flu guy was like. Oh, uh, what was flu like? All right, so this is pre-2012 flu. Uh, I would say the dumbest thing that I did, uh, other than other than investing a, a couple of dollars in Miley Cyrus concert, which I should have known better. <laughs> Miley Cyrus, <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm never going to let you get... In the USA? Yeah, I was just going to say. You came on like a wrecking ball, okay? Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, my uh, God. I was... You know what? All right, this is all right. This is this is not this is this is not, not funny at all. Uh-oh. So where I was living in Detroit, uh, you know, Detroit has got a little reputation, but well, I love Detroit. Uh, mm-hmm. But anyway, so where I was living, uh, and I had just uh, just got some new rims on my truck, right? And I and I had the same car since college or whatever, like I, you know, so I never really did anything stupid. But that was this one of the stupid ones. So I was living in downtown Detroit. I uh, got some rims in my car. I was like, all right. I was like, forget it. Uh, F word. I was like, forget it. I'm just going to just, 
I'm gonna be young and I'm gonna have me. I'm gonna give me some rails for my car. So this big, stupid, gigantic rails for my truck, right? What kind of truck? Uh, I had a Yukon. Okay. Right? Three days after I got the rails, uh, I get a call from uh, the, the security uh, at, at the place I was living. They're like, "Hey, uh, you got black Yukon?" I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> it was like, um, it was like got Florida license plate. I said, "Yeah." Um, and I hate to tell you this, but uh, your car's been stolen. And I was like, "Why do you think my car's been stolen?" <laughs> it's, it's theirs, not there. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so he, he comes down, and goes in his video camera. These guys, they broke into the uh, the lot where you know all the vehicles were. And so they broke the they broke the my, uh, my window, broke the steering car, ste- steering column of my car. It was this old raggedy minivan and pushed my car down the street. Right? Wow. Uh, so, yeah. So they were just, I mean, joy riding down the street with a minivan pushing my car to some random junkyard. So anyway, so they finally found my car the next day, and it was, I mean, totally. They took everything. I mean, they took my third row seats, my rims. They took my radio. They even took a picture. I had a picture of my family in there. I was like, dude, y'all took a picture of my family? Like, like so Wow. Like, yeah, they took that. So anyway, so uh, I finally got a car back, got it fixed up. So what did I do? I said, forget it. I need my rims. Well, I thought we got enough to the rims. Because, why? Because I'm dumb at that, at that age. I said, I had to have these rims. And they look so good for my three A's that I had it. <laughs> so, got, you know, when got the you know, insurance Thank, thank God they paid for some of it. I was like, man, let me go get some more rims. So what did I do? I got some bigger rims. Some <laughs> bigger, more, more stupid, more foolish rims than I had before. Uh, a week later, what happened? Oh, we no. called the security guy at the apartment complex that I was living at. comes like, hey, you got uh, you got black Yukon? I'm like, yeah. Oh, you got no. Florida license plate? I said, yeah. Said, and I think your car's been stolen. I'm like, dude, how do you think my car's been stolen? Again, we've had this conversation before. What are you talking about? So anyway, uh, they got me again. So that was the last time I had rooms. Really? How did they, I mean, was your car parked on the street or what? I don't get it. So it was, all right, so the first time, there's a lot, and it was like, it was secure, but it wasn't really that mm-hmm. secure. It was well, just a fancy somebody could just push open, which, and they put a padlock on it. So these people just, Broke the padlock, um, pushed the fence open. So the next time, they say, "Oh, we got it even more secure. We have valet service." But I think about, I think somebody in the valet has something to do with it. I would second. think because um, they yeah. wouldn't know otherwise. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, so that was yeah, that was my foolish moments. Uh, hey, that's why I drive a, a, a trailblazer. That's exactly. the way it looks. Don't have to worry about any of that. Yeah. Well, I I know I know an infinity if anybody wants to steal that one. <laughs> Wait, it already was stolen. God, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Yeah, well, I mean to add to that though, I I, I get you know a lot of the players you know when they you know get the the sign up bonus, having fun, have them, you know, I call it blow money. I think every not only just athletes, just regular households should have. Uh, uh, X amount of, you know, monthly amount or annual amount that they just can blow, spit on, whatever makes them feel good. Because otherwise, what are you working so hard for? That's right. So, they can't I, take it with you. Yeah, especially a lot of these athletes, they come from, you know, poor inner city neighborhood, barely, you know, a bologna sandwich, it's that for, you know, dinner and being raised by a single mother and stuff like that. So they want to. They want to show up, you know, and show out. I mean, come right. on, it's, it's a new life, but yeah. that is a, you know, what, what, what Saquon Barkley is doing. It, it, it can potentially be a great idea, but it also can be, you know, can hurt, like you said. You know, if he gets hurt, Pepsi is not going to want to keep that up if he has a career ending injury or something like that, you know. Uh, those endorsements will fall off uh, quicker than, than, than they came aboard. So Andre, if you were if you were to tell your younger self, self, make sure you do this for the future. F word. What would that be? So, all right. So, if we, if we do 
two things. It'll be one part will be like in life, and the other part will be like in football. So I go with the life. I go with the football part first. Okay. So, yeah. So if I get to go go back and talk to my younger self, I would probably say in football, I would have said I would have focused more on like uh, mental side of the game than just the physical side. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, because that you know that's like actually the most important side. Uh, like all the stuff that Tom Brace does, like his mental game and mental preparation is just so on point. Like it's, it's light years beyond you know, anybody else, and that's what makes him great. Uh, so I would, you know, I'd have told myself that, like you know, hey, you know, it's, it's cool. I know you're gonna work hard and all that good stuff on the field, but like off the field and the mental preparation, like I would have definitely took that way more seriously. I wish I would have just known about. It. I didn't really even know about it. Uh, but off the field and life, I would have just. Uh, I would tell myself, just don't worry about what the crowd is going to say, like what other people are going to say. Like, you know, for the most part, you know, the guys who go out and stunt and are flashy, like, they don't really do it because they really want to. They do it because of what the what it looks like to other people right? and, and that attraction. You know, and if I could have just not been worried about what other people thought of me, it would have saved me a hell oh God, it would save me such a headache and Save me a bunch of money, probably, and save me a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, so yeah, I'll probably just say those two things. Yeah. Well, that's Dude. good. Yeah, for sure. That's good. So now I'm going to ask you about another F word, your family, because that's okay. what, you know, that's what what's so much more, you know, the most important thing, what we do things for, you know, you got kids. So when did you meet your wife? And tell us about her. She's beautiful, right. that picture. Wow. Oh, thank you. Yeah, my wife is awesome. It's a funny story how we met. So we met in college, right? So anyway, like, I'm kind of like, you know, like a really, really shy dude uh, in college. So anyway, when I'm at the club, uh, I've seen her a couple times before. She ran the track. Uh, so, I, you know, I kind of I've always seen her. Yeah, you maybe? Yeah. And so, uh, anyway, so I got one of my friends, uh, my friend, his name is Nishi. Nishi was like a big talker. He talked to anybody. I was like, hey, Nishi. I was like, dude, she's over there. I was like, bro, man, go get her number for me. Like, for real? I was like, yeah, man. I was like, yeah. So anyway, so he was over in the little section from her track friend. You know, I sent, I called him my assassin. I sent my assassin over to her. I was like, hey. <laughs> like, hey. Who wants your number? Right? So I saw her look back at me, you know, I, kind of shot her a little smile or whatever. She kind of <laughs> rolled, it, rolled, rolled her eyes, turned back around or whatever. I so, love it. She didn't. Yeah, so, <laughs> no, so, she, she, so he came back with a piece of paper. You know, it was back in the day, you write, you know, you write a number on a piece of paper. Mm-hmm. So he wrote, wrote a number on a piece of paper. And I was like, he was like, hey, man. He was like, man, give me your number. I mean, her number. I was like, really? Because the way she looked, I was like, I wasn't really sure. <laughs> I was like, all right, man, I'm shooting. I'm, I, I was hyped, right? So anyway, get home. Next day, I call. Some lady in Utah answers the phone. Get out. Right? Oh, my yeah, gosh. I'm like, I'm like, hello, uh, can I speak to Kiana? She's like, who, Kiana? I said, like, who is it? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm supposed to be calling. So anyway, uh, so obviously, uh, that was not the girl. No, cause she Good did, girl. So, I love her. I yeah, love her. Yeah, That's yeah, perfect. Yeah, for sure. So what did I do? All right, this is when first Facebook first came out. What did I do? I went on Facebook. I had to find her. I went, you I stopped her. Was that about so uh, I said, hey, <clears throat> I don't know if you know this, but I know you're not from Utah, and you gave me the wrong number. <laughs> <laughs> I need your number. And so finally, she kind of conceded, you know, to my, to my, uh, to my, my southern charm. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and the rest is history. But that's how we met, though. Oh, uh, I love so that. We at the club. Love that. That is. And then, you're, you're, what is she doing nowadays? Yeah, so she's a physical therapist. So uh, you know, I, I'm very smart. So very what good. I did is I made a business decision about my fourth year in the NFL. Like I had like I had a little bit of a knee issue, really bad, but it was enough that it was like hurting me. And I was like, okay, look, the average NFL career is like three years. Right. And I was like, hmm. I was like, I'm already at four, so I'm already beat the odds. I was like, a doctor, because she's a doctor. I was like, a doctor can work, can work as long as they want to work. 
I was like, dude, I've already beat. But any time I could, you know, get cut or, you know, be out of the league, I was like, I think I need to marry this girl. So that's when I made the decision to marry her. So, yeah, I was like, yeah. So I married Smart. Physical therapist, she opened up her own clinic uh, earlier this year. Uh, she's just been doing great. Uh, that's just, uh, yeah, that's my girl right there. She's she's awesome. Wow. Does she have other doctors working out of there? Is it her? Uh, no, so just her. So she's a same practice. And, uh, and uh, she, she treats a lot of guys, you know, guys who I used to play with, guys, a lot of current NFL players. Uh, yeah, she treats a little bit of everybody. Um, but, yeah, she's she's good. She does all the acupuncture and Wow. And all that, all, that, all that kind of stuff. So she's pretty, she's solid on uh, what she does. She takes it really seriously. So uh, I'm her assistant now. So like she's my boss. So which is, which is kind of weird, but you know, because she when always in the office, she really is my boss. I'm like, dude, you can't talk to me like that. I was like, you can't, you can't, because like right now we're not like husband and wife, we're not like employer employee. I'm like, oh, Ooh, and I like, love that. that. I would have, because I'm one of those, oh, you're not the boss. I'm, you're not the boss of me kind of people. But she'd be really, yeah. she'd be like, yeah, actually, right now I am. I love that. Oh, my gosh, that's so great. Well, so, you know, we had that conversation, you know, that um, that funding, another F word, physical therapy, Mark. That's an F word, right? Physical, like, phony. Um, <laughs> but, I, was saying, I was saying yes, and okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm on point right now. <laughs> so now funding for this you said that was like pretty much out of pocket for you guys right yeah pretty much uh not not pretty much it was uh <clears throat> you know startup uh for whatever you know business funding is a little tough to get as, as a startup especially when you don't know how to get it right so uh you know and, and i had you know i had some capital to be able to do it and uh she was just fed, fed up that for it yes yeah, she was just fed yes. up with her other job um mm -hmm. Yeah, she was working at a place, in a, you know, a good place, it wasn't a, a, a bad place, but, you know, she worked at a kind of a factory mill, physical therapy clinic, where she saw, you know, 20 patients a day, could only see them for like 20 minutes at a time, and realized that she really couldn't get them better like she wanted them, like she wanted to, so, uh, she was like, hey, I can't do this anymore, I gotta own my own clinic, I gotta get these people better, I gotta be able to spend time with them. User uh, channel. Uh-huh. So, uh. So I was like, all right, well, I was like, look, hey, man, shoot your shot. Like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm never going to tell anybody that they can't do anything. I'm like, yeah, we're going to make it happen somewhere or another. So shoot your shot because I want you to, I don't want mm -hmm. you to be unhappy wherever you are. So, uh, that's when you have a passion for it. So, yeah. Right. So. No, exactly. And so then, I mean, what I like about that too, though, is you're able to set your own schedule because you have a couple of little kids, right? Yeah. Beautiful yeah. little girls. How old are they? Uh, I got one that, uh, she just turned three, and I got another one who's one and a half. Oh my gosh! How yeah, mouth? How boys. mouthy are they yet? Are they are they mouthy yet? Mouthy? Yeah. Well, they came out mouthy. <laughs> 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 but yeah, yeah, no, they are. Uh, they, they have something else. I wanted. It's funny. I wanted girls. Though, so I'm so glad I, I got girls. Oh uh, wow! I didn't really want. I mean, if I had a boy, I was cool, but. I, I wanted girls. I was I was in a locker room. I had all guy cousins, had a brother. Like I'm tired of being around us. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I wanted girls. Oh, see, that's yeah. so funny because I have I have three boys and I only wanted girls. Yeah. But oh, uh, uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Now, I mean, I I just couldn't imagine having yeah. a boy because I had a little brother that was so horrible, throwing spiders <laughs> at me and. So all three of my boys grew up afraid of, of spiders, which was, they outgrew it, unfortunately. My youngest throws them at me now. But, um, no, so what you're doing now, I mean, guys, how long have you been married? I've been married for five years now. For five years. That's that's awesome. I mean, what you're doing right now is, I mean, you're you're really teaching your girls you know, what partnership is, what marriage is, I mean, what's what's important. I mean, the two of you working together like that is huge. And then now what you're doing as well, and, you know, we've got we've got about seven more minutes, but how did you and Mark meet? Uh, exactly because of my wife, uh, pretty much. So this is kind of a strange story. So, <laughs> yeah. So I'm a... Uh, We're all strange people, so, so it works. Yeah, exactly, right. 
Uh, so yeah, so uh, we uh, we had went to an event, uh, and I think uh, it was a uh, one of maybe Mark's clients or maybe just a friend or whatever opened up a barber shop. So, anyways, I think Mark commented on it like, you know, it's a good job and all that kind of stuff. And my wife saw uh, that Mark put out a post of you know looking for uh, looking for insurance agents or looking for anybody to you know come on board at New Beginnings. My wife was like, hey, here's an opportunity. I know you know, got your insurance done, and I know you stuck with your own financial planner. didn't really work out. You know, the, uh, you know, I was supposed to be working with him, and that, that just, did, just totally mm-hmm. didn't work. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway, so she was like, oh, you, know, you need to reach out to him. I was like, all right, I will. She was like, no, I will. I was like, no, I, I just said that I will reach out to him. <laughs> she, was like, she was like, no, I'll do it. I was like, no, you don't understand. I just said I, I, I'm, I'm going to do it right now. She said, no, nope, I'm doing it right now for you. I was like, uh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so she reached out to Mark uh, and was like, hey, my husband wants to talk to you. You tell him. I was like, oh, I hope this goes well. And, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, he's one of those guys. His <laughs> wife has to talk for him. I see. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I was like, you know, what are you doing? But, you know, working out. So, uh, yeah, well, luckily, Mark's a cool dude. But I'm, I'm Isn't sure he? He's kinda, yeah, he's you know, about it at first. Nah. Yeah. I had to show my wife like, oh, "Who's lady reaching out to me in my inbox?" Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's how we that's how we got started. So. And you guys All are already making a difference. I mean, didn't you just bring somebody on? Yeah, for sure. So we we did. So, you mentoring uh, somebody? I'm, I'm, yeah, super excited about this guy. Uh, we'll be able, you know, I'm so good at him in, in many ways. So. Uh, just bring him in on board and just uh, you know showing him what we got. Uh, it's just real cool because Morris has got he's got all the processes in order. Like you know he makes it as a you know as a business partner, man. He makes it really really easy on me. He's got everything already on laid out for him. It's just me following a plan. So mm-hmm. uh, the plan works, which is cool. You know if it didn't work, it, it wouldn't work. But That's it works, right. So it works. <laughs> That's right. That's wow. So okay. What's next? For for me? Yeah. So I would say, uh, continue, you know, developing, you know, getting my feet wet in this business and continue just, you know, making these deals. Uh, also, just continue growing and just learning. Like, yeah, you know, every time I meet with Mark, like, I'm, I'm stealing something from him. <laughs> every, every single time. It's just like, he always just drops some nuggets of wisdom. So I just grow as a, you know, not only as a businessman, not only in the industry, but Right. As a, as a person, period. You know, mm-hmm. I just continue to grow. Yeah. Uh, so, but next, it's just uh, realistically me developing my brand and getting out there in terms of like, you know, more speaking engagements because I love like, you know, motivational speaking, public speaking, and all that. Like, it's kind of like what I really love. So, be able to blend like the financial services part of it also with the speaking engagements. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm working on, I'm writing a book right now, uh, which I was waiting for you to announce it. Yeah, good. Almost, it's almost done, so I got a more to be on a, on a time crunch to get it done. So, which is good. But uh, I know what so. the, I know what the name of it is. But why do you want to tell? I don't have the title yet. You told me. I didn't want. I don't want to name it or say well, it if you don't I want it. it. Huh? You said well, um, yeah, cause I, I forgot what the title. I think I've switched titles so many times that I, I can't remember. You won't learn anything from this book. Oh, that one, yeah, that's it, yeah, that one, yeah. That's interesting, I like that. Yeah, that's, that's, I think that's the one that's going to stick. You won't learn anything from this book. I, I, I like it, I think it's genius, because it'd be, it's kind of like one of those, I dare you to knock this off my shoulder. Exactly. You know, it's like, come on, I dare you. Yeah. So that's, you're daring me to read that book, because I'm not going to learn anything, so that's cool. I won't waste my time then in not learning. (laughs) <laughs> almost like what they call it a double negative wow. exactly. so that's good well you know what so we can definitely um you know mark and i've worked together for a really long time um i've got events i need people to speak and um next week you'll you'll learn some really good things um, i'm really excited about this um some new partners that i'm bringing on you'll meet Next week, I won't be there. But uh, I think the biggest thing 
for me is knowing that I'm making a difference. Because that, you know, when you lay down at night and you know you did something that isn't hurting other people, it's helping them. You're not, you're not stealing cars, you're not stealing rims. You're, you're, like, you're actually making a difference in people's lives. And it doesn't matter if they're young or old. And that's, that's where you're going to find some real... I'm trying to think of that word. Um, feng shui. No. <laughs> it's like, there we go. Fulfillment. Fulfillment. There we go. Feng shui. That was good. But <laughs> fulfillment in what you do. I mean, because that just impacts your future. And um, now... With uh, now, you said you've already closed some deals. Are are they former players that you've been able to help, or just people that you know? Uh, just people that I know. One of them is actually a uh, my wife's hairdresser, which is an awesome dude. Uh huh. So yeah, uh, but you know, actually, but former players and then uh, current players as well is you know a direction that I'll definitely be you know be be targeting uh, mm-hmm. just because I kind of. Kind of another space or whatever. Because uh, even thinking about, you know, Saquon Barkley, right? Now, if he did what he did and invested, you know, all his money, like, it, like I said, it's really risky. But if you put it, in, you know, in a pretty good insurance contract, like, right? This, it could possibly be genius. Safe. You know what I mean? Like, you're safe. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're safe. And that's the thing that, like, that I really want to, you know, tell guys, like, hey, man, you know, this is. It's not just about, you know, after you die. Like, it is a safe investment. It's while you um, live. It can, really, can really, really help you. So, you know, mm-hmm. so that's kind of that's- Awesome. Andre, Mark, thank you for being on tonight. Andre, will you come on again? Of course. Oh, my gosh, yes, because we have so many more things to talk about. But uh, I just got poked, saying that I got okay. uh, less than a minute. But, okay. guys, it's late there in Atlanta. Go to sleep. I will talk to you tomorrow, I'm sure. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in on this week, August 7th, 2018, The F Word. And thank you to all of our sponsors, Joe Savino, Jim Bell. Shout out to you for making it possible for us to get out there to 66 countries. Oh, my gosh. Have a great night, everybody.